Well, welcome, viewers, to the latest edition of uh, Casino Life and Sports Betting Operator. My name is Peter White, and I'm the publisher of this media. Um, today, we're uh, fortunate to uh, have an uh, interview with Paul Steelman, Chief Executive of Steelman Partners. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for having me today. Well, um, the uh, the um, this this interview is taking place actually at the uh, Metropolitan Casino uh, London uh, Mayfair. And uh, Paul, this is a, a casino that um, is, is familiar to your good selves because I believe you were involved with the what is a, a thorough refurbishment. Well, we were, Peter, and we're very pleased with it. We've heard that it's great success. Uh, we were very pleased to work with uh, uh, the 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 uh, the team there at uh, at the Metropolitan and, and Mike Siberling and every and the entire staff to develop something we consider a little bit more Las Vegas meets London. Of course, we've always been highly respectful of the gaming in London, and we understand it well. And of course, I'm a member of a couple of the clubs there when membership was really necessary. And, uh, you know, I understand the gaming well, and we said, well, you know, it can't be old, it can't be stuffy, it's got to be designed for younger people. It's got to have a vibe to it. It's got to be unique. And uh, of course, this building in Mayfair, it's well, it's kind of an office building. You know, it sits in a pretty historic neighborhood. You couldn't really touch it too much, although we tried, I might, might, must admit. But, um, you know, I always thought that uh, in designing this with the team, and uh, I thought that it would be a very, very interesting way to reintroduce ourselves back into Europe and, and design something a little bit modern, a little bit fresh, having some of the things that we know are great attractions in Las Vegas, such as the tandem based activities of the bars and restaurants and things of this nature. Uh, so we're, we're very happy about that. Things. Well, it's very busy, so uh, well done. Um, you grew up in and around Atlantic City and graduated from Clemson University of Architecture. Your father, Edgar, was an architect and partner in the architectural practice, Will Lasky and Steelman. Um, so as a kid, did you uh, dream of being a farmer or an astronaut? <laughs> I, I never did. You know, I, uh, my father did have a, his own practice since 1962 until he retired, may rest in peace. Um, and I was very fortunate to work for him when I was five and six, seven and eight, even 12 years old. I did my first set of working drawings for a, a garage in, a, in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I always respected what he did. I always thought it was an admirable profession. I went with him to many AIA meetings or architectural meetings and some presentations I would tag along as a little kid. And and I always thought, well, I was kind of interested in engineering a little bit uh, at the beginning. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. Uh, but as time went on, I realized that uh, we had already been to the moon. And so I wasn't sure what was next. And uh, I could have been uh, pretty successful at that, I thought. But um, I've always had a fascination with planes and rockets and things of this nature. And so, but I wound up becoming an architect. I went to Clemson, I interned for my father for a couple of years or a year. I wound up working for the city of Atlantic City where I met all of these great architects who were designing casinos at that time. And voila, I go and I meet Joel Bergman and Steve Wynn. And uh, uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of our, the, the first part of my little history. Yeah, because of, um, you know, you, um, you started your career um, same time as Resorts International in Atlantic City was being developed, and you then moved to Las Vegas and worked on the Mirage. Um, and you've continued to architect, design amazing buildings. Are there architectural or design elements of an integrated resort that haven't uh, changed over time, or change is constant in every department? <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, first off, uh, Yes, I did start my career a little bit with Resorts International through while working in my father's office. And then I was fortunate enough to meet Steve Wynn and to be on the architectural team of the Golden Nugget Atlantic City, which we opened in 1980. Went back, 
to work what what now was the ill-fated Trump uh, Taj Mahal, now Hard Rock, and did the drawings for about nine months for Research International before Steve Wynn called me again and said, let's move to Nevada. So uh, I, I more or less, uh, that's how I got started at it. The, the thing is that I, I think our buildings are constant in, in certain respects. Um, you know, our, our buildings have a sense of adventure to them. They are trying to pique the curiosity to get the guests to explore them. They are filled with tandem-based activities because for 90% or 95% of all the people, gambling is a tandem-based activity. It has to do with bars, drinking, lounges, health clubs, hotels, wonderful stays, pools, and all sorts of things that extend your visit and uh, keep the person there as, a, as an entertaining vacation. You know, it's not going to a health spa resort or it's not going to the beach. You know, this, this vacation is filled with entertainment. It's filled with fun. It's filled with good food and it's filled with gambling. The one constant to, to the designs is convenience. Uh, and I would say that the other constants, constant is that, you know, obviously the gaming is the heart and soul of any of these places. Places that kind of ignore the gaming to a certain degree and focus on the tandem base activities are tending to fail. So uh, that's, that's the constants. Now, has the rules changed as we've gone along over the last 40 years? Of course they have. Um, of course they have. But it's kind of funny. If you would look at who I would consider the mentor of our business, Steve Wynn, I mean, basically all of his buildings were slightly tweaked between the, uh, the, the Golden Nugget, between the Mirage and uh, Treasure Island, and, and then the Wynn and Encore and then the ones in Macau. They were all advancements of the same set of rules. Uh, the 70 rules that kind of, you know, keep us designing casinos in this way. And uh, uh, that's, that's what we would consider uh, 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 a growth of the, of the buildings. And as you can see, the Mirage was just sold to Hard Rock and they're going to have a very successful building when they renovate it and bring it up to today's standards. I mean, I, I've visited many of the casino resorts around the world that have been architect designed by Steelman Partners. Um, but is there a special secret to making a casino resort flow so its uh, layout delivers a better customer experience and ultimately superior financial performance? Yes, of course it is. Uh, I mean, that is uh, one of the things uh, a casino must, even though sometimes large, they must be feature convenience and and they must not be disorienting. There are some casino designers who want to disorient people, people to get lost in the back of a dark room. We're not like that at all. I mean, we think that the uh, entertainment and the hospitality and the gaming business has to be knitted together in a design so that they can all be successful. There's no lost leaders in buildings any longer. You know, your theater must make money, your uh, food and beverage must make money. And gaming as a tandem event, you must knit those things together to create the flow, create the short steps, create the convenience, and what we call stratify. So we want to stratify the casino to for its income generation. You know that that the hotel rooms that are associated with high limits, the high limits rooms are associated with the high end restaurants, and the the food court are associated with the lower end casino or the lower end hotel. And uh, that's uh, that's kind of what we want to do. And you have to realize that no matter what the location. Of, of in the world we're designing a casino everyone and i mean everyone wants to be like las vegas a total experience not something that is you know a bifurcated experience you know we we put them in another world uh, you know one of my famous speeches that i always say is that steve Wynn would never allow a mirror because once you'd look at yourself, you'd say, oh, my God, I'm fat. I'm this. I'm losing my hair. It's gray. 
I'm not James Bond. I'm not going to win today. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, that sort of thing that we're trying to create the experience, create the fantasy. You're younger, you're thinner, you're, you're more vivacious, and you have a, a wonderful time. So, I mean, the Steel One Partner Affiliate Company, they deliver a, a multi-disciplinary uh, service to clients covering architecture, interior design, lighting, branding, and 3D visualization. That's a lot of bases to cover. You also have offices across three continents, North America, Asia, and Europe. And well, how, how do you manage to keep on top of everything? <laughs> well, you know what, since, uh, since COVID, I mean, uh, it's amazing how it's affected our business because all of a sudden we don't need to hire an architect to move into Las Vegas. So um, there are Teams meetings and Zoom meetings uh, all day long, just like we're doing this interview. Uh, that's how I follow what's going on in the various offices that we have. Many of the offices that are overseas, because Asia has been slow in catching up with the, the COVID restrictions and the commerce associated with that, Many of the offices overseas are working on projects in America. So, I mean, uh, that's how I kind of keep up with it. But then again, I have a tent and underneath the tent is 25 or so of the, of the leaders of this practice. And those 25 leaders, they're not getting out of that tent. They are with me for the duration. And they, uh, they are the real designers that create such a diversity in our practice from the architecture to the interiors, to the branding, to the theming, to the graphics, and especially to the lighting. And that's what gives us a, a different holistic view of the casino is that we come at it from all those characteristics, you know, from all of those design disciplines. And even that we have our own engineers we'd like to use that we know that will make the slot machines not cold and hot, that we know will keep the air in the, in, the, in the casinos that we smoke in fresh and clean, that we know will also not use too much energy in the building, uh, you know, ripping the profits out of it. Because face it, they still are making it 25 cents at a time most times. So, but that's how I do it. So bring the conversation back to Las Vegas. Um, I mean, it is known for tearing down the very buildings that make it successful and then building more wow resorts. Do other markets take the same rebirth approach to maintaining their customer relevance? Or is Las Vegas, do you think, unique in that aspect? Well, I think, I think our buildings, you know, uh, you know, there was uh, an architect once that said that uh, uh, you know, most buildings in the world become good and historic. And, you know, if they are a monumental structure, um, you know, with, with people enjoying them for 50 years. But in a casino, you have to enjoy it for five minutes. So consequently, you walk in, you look left, you look right. And if it piques your curiosity, then you're hooked on the casino and that that view changes with trends and colors and lighting and food tastes and bar tastes and, and all sorts of things like this so the buildings are flexible to a certain degree um, and can be renovated to a certain degree but they do tend to look older faster like some of the buildings in Las Vegas, like the Rio or even Monte Carlo, which is now the park. I mean, these buildings tended, they were a little bit too designed, a little bit too themed, pointing them in one direction. And consequently, um, it became kind of an anti-Vegas sort of thing. When we designed Circa, we said, well, this is going to be Vegas. Vegas has a style. Vegas has a look, a feeling, and uh, so we've always thought that, that that is it. But, you know, my father once told me that you're an old man when you, your buildings are being torn down. Well, I did the Desert Inn, the last edition of the Desert Inn, and Steve Wynn tore that down when I was 44 years old. So, I mean, I was, well, am I that old? I get it with my father. 
The UNLV's Black Bar uses the phrase the fun economy to include entertainment, tourism, and sports. The multidisciplinary services you offer provide insight into where our fun economy is heading in the future. How do you see resorts developing in the coming years? For example, are we going to see a flagship resort with a sports arena as its centerpiece, as it's being mooted for the Las Vegas Strip? Well, I would say we probably are seeing a sports arena designed into a resort. Right now, there's three being planned, one on the South Strip, south of the airport, one potentially at the Tropicana site and one at the old wet and wild site north of the fountain blue i think that um, um, sports and the arena uh, connected to it um, is is quite a good thing i mean although uh, to be a successful sports uh, arena and to be a successful sports teams obviously you know there's 65,000 seats at our Allegiant Stadium. And, you know, you have to take into consideration massive amounts of parking, massive entry at the same time, massive exit at the same time. So consequently, to attach it to a casino is a pretty unique design element to make it happen. So, as a matter of fact, nowhere in the world has arenas been put up right next to casinos. In Sun City, South Africa, they have a 10,000 seat arena in the middle. And, you know, there are a few small ones like Mandalay Bay and the Orleans Arena here that are attached to it, but they're eight, 9,000 seats. But as soon as you start getting 25, 28,000 seats, well, you have a sort of a different problem. But you got to realize that Las Vegas now is a sports team. You know how Las Vegas has gone through these these um, these these design trends, and you know one time and when Treasure Island was built, it was the family, you know, and then 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 all of a sudden it it became nightclubs, and then and and then it became you know five star resorts and taking everything up, and the whole restaurant scene, and then the whole retail scene was changed by the forum shops. All of a sudden. The retail here makes the most square, most money per square foot of any place in America. We have more restaurants here that are five star because they go well with this casino and with the entertainment attractions. And then you have now sports is the most recent of these things. And we will be the biggest sports town in the world. We are right now have an NFL team. We have a hockey team. More than likely, we'll get a basketball team, an NBA team. And more than likely, we'll get an MLB, a baseball team. We already have soccer. We already have lacrosse. And we're going to have the, probably the most exciting Formula One race that's ever been held. Yeah. And, uh, so it's just like anything else. The retail, the food, the nightclubs. Las Vegas does it well. And I always kid everybody when they come here. You know, and people stand with me at downtown Fremont Street and say, I want this. Well, okay, you can get it. You just have to be like Las Vegas. But when you see people making views and things of this nature, making laws, oh, we're going to put a casino here and a casino there and a casino there and whatever, however they decide all this stuff, nobody, nobody has ever said, I'm going to be Las Vegas. And uh, of course, that's the secret, which I've always said. A hard time understanding why they do it, but that's that's politicians. Um, Paul, uh, the end finally question: uh, What what have you uh, got opening in twenty twenty three and uh, into the future? What are the latest projects you are involved with? Well, we're going to open up the Galaxy uh, Entertainment Convention Center in twenty twenty three, which we designed an awful lot of. I'm very proud of that. Francis Louis did a wonderful job. We are opening the, the Santan River at Gila or Gila, the Gila River Tribe in Arizona, which is a beautiful casino. It's the first to really feature outdoor windows all throughout the whole casino. So it has these beautiful gardens and unbelievable sky. Uh, we open that. We, we have several other new casinos in Europe that would be opening. We have four projects in Las Vegas, but none of them will be open in 2023. I mean, uh, we have got in a, in a project in Las Vegas that's so serious 
that we have to finish the drawings, bid it, get, and, you know, because of one little mistake can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So uh, we, we think that that is going to be it for us in 2023, but we'll see. You never can tell. We do have a couple of big expansions that we're working on that part of them probably will be open in 2023. Excellent. Well, it's been a real pleasure to catch up with you. I think the last time um, we met actually was at the opening of the uh, Soleil Manila. <laughs> so that's a few years ago. Well, it's the number one casino in Manila still today. So uh, whatever we did there with uh, Ricky Rezon and his team, uh, Don Almeida, and uh, and at that time, Bill Widener, I mean, it worked. We hope that, you know, we, oh, I did, I forgot to mention one, one project that we did is we did design Inspire Korea. And I would think that probably has a chance to be open in 2023 as well which is at the Incheon Airport. So uh, we do did, did design that. But I mean, it, it is, you know, there are many things happening in our business and uh, new things are happening every single day. So uh, we we hope to continue. Uh, it's uh, It's been now for me over 40 years, uh, 44 years I've been doing this. I hate to say that, but it's 44 years. That's a long time. <laughs> but I love it. I'm not going to do anything else. By the way, we do have a new slot machine we designed as well called Running Rich. And we just received our Nevada license. It tested out very well. Uh, we're very anxious to start putting it around various casinos, but it's the first driving slot machine. Excellent. So it, uh, I'll look out for that next time in Vegas. Thank you for your time. Cheers for now. All right. Peace, Peter. All the best. Thank you. See ya. So